spiritual life that I can look back with joy and have compassion for my family and the generations of people who had to experience the suffering of living in that impoverished and war-torn area. When I was in the third grade, my family immigrated to the mountains of Appalachia in North Carolina. I already felt different B. Dash. For coming to the United States, but when I arrived I really felt out of place. I experienced what it was like to be other. Due to the racism prevalent in the area, I felt isolated and unsafe at school and around town. When I got drunk and high for the first time, none of the heavy dash ness of what I was experiencing mattered anymore. The name calling and stares from other kids faded away. I felt like I could breathe deeply for the first time. I was painfully shy, and alcohol and drugs gave me the power to connect with others. I never thought substances would take me to a dark place. The tragedy of addiction was that what I thought was a solo dash onto my suffering would eventually create more suffering for myself and my loved ones. I first found meditation when I was in college and read a neat little book on Taoist alchemy. I meditated for the first time visualizing a golden egg melting down my body. I still drank and got high, even while meditating. I can see now that I was using meditation as another escape. I wasn't at peace with my present reality. I always ran. The next few years were a blur. After I graduated college, I worked as a wilderness camp counselor. One day, I had an alcohol in dash duct. Epiphany, I thought, if this is all there is to life, then screw it, I am going to kill myself. But I also thought that I would like to see new Mexico before I die. Instead of driving back to work, I started driving west to MT, Taylor in New Mexico. I walked out into the woods thinking, I would have some grand spiritual experience. I didn't find enlightened, dash, meant, but I did decide to not give up on life that day. I didn't get into recovery then. It would take multiple suicide attempts, lots of punk shows, and more aimless wandering before I found my way to healing. I still meditated periodically and I found some peace in Buddhist communities, but I am not sure if my sitting against a wall doing zazen eventually led me to where I am now. I was lost, and it felt like I was always aimlessly pursuing a new relationship or going to a new place to quiet the discomfort I felt on the inside. I lost relationships and career opportunities due to drugs and alcohol. It was a bit of a blur, but during this period I made multiple attempts at taking my life and none of them were successful. I felt so empty. I was lost in Duca. I was living with my father and helping out at his church. I thought maybe I could bring anarchist philosophy into Christianity and wake up the boys I taught in Bible study. So I went to a prestigious grad school in North Carolina and tried to appear spiritual. I also got involved with the Buddhist community at the school, and I led the morning sits on a regular basis. I was studying theology, interning at churches, leading youth groups, preaching, and leading prayer groups. I felt faith as I lived 
A double life. I was studying how to be a spiritual leader to others while I was hungover and miserable in my own life. I was not able to practice what I preached. I thought that if people could see how I really felt on the inside in the life I led, they would all reject me. At this time, my physical health started to deteriorate quickly as well. I left graduate school with a degree and lived and worked at an interfaith community in Washington, D.C. where people with and with dash out intellectual disabilities shared life together. I once again lived a double life. I spent days being with people in a community that taught me to am dash Brace my vulnerability, but at night I would numb my feelings by drink. Dash. King. In the beginning, I would go out to bars in my neighborhood with friends. 